Hello! We're back to add more things to our tile map. So we currently have this groundhog in our world, and the groundhog can walk around the world. And we placed things in the world using a nice tile map, and it lets us help see with a camera following it what's going on. We can wander around, but we I would like to bounce into some things. I'm going to leave these rocks and logs for interactions or other things later. They're just flavor in the background, but I want to set up some walls. So let's go out to our grid here and create a new tile map, rectangular. And as I do that, I'm going to call it the collision layer. So in the collision layer, I am going to, let's say this one's at 0, 1, negative 2. And in my collision layer, we are going to set up some walls. So just to make it easier for us to see what's going on over here, I am going to turn off a few things. Let's put the game back over here because I know that other things are working. So, so we can see things a little bit better. Let's turn off the background and flavor, set them to not be active so that I can easily see where I'm going to put down my walls right now. Okay, so let's get my tile map working here. I'm drawing a few pieces of some walls. Let's make a little spot here. And, oh, wait. That one's going to have the snow in the background. I really want to use, let's say, this one. Yes. That one is going to give me a nice ability to create a little wall there. And let's make a tile so I can put the wall up there. This is going to be good. Now let's just put a thick wall over there so we can see the difference of what happens. Okay, so this is going to be my hopeful collisions between what's going on. And if we run it right now, we can run right over it. There's no stopping us with those walls. Okay, back here in the collision, I want to add a component. Now we're tempted to go to Physics 2D but there's actually a tile map special spot down here where it has the tile map collider 2D. And so tile map, tile renderer, tile map collider 2D all live in that menu box there. And so in this collider 2D, I am going to drop it on top of this particular layer. And if we see over here, it started to draw collisions around all of the pieces. The ones that were PNGs that only filled up half of their 32 by 32 square, the tile map collider made sure that I was going to intersect and be able to walk in there. It wasn't just a block by block collision. It was based on the transparency of the PNG. So let's see what happens on this. We have our collider set up and we made sure that our groundhog is a dynamic and it has a capsule collider. Let's see what happens as we start moving around. Bonk. There we go. Let's make this bigger now that it's a different screen. Whoa. Okay. I did not want that. And so let's go turn that off. Spinning can be fun if that's what your game wants to do, but I want my groundhog to stand straight up all the time. Under constraints, freeze the rotation part. And now when we hit stuff, we will not be encountering that kind of rotation. But look, I can go all the right up, all the way up to that edge. I can't go there in the corner because of what was happening with the tile collider, but I can go all the way right up to that outside edge. So nice. And if we turn everything back on over there, there we go. Now here's our world and we can walk around and do stuff and run into some walls. So we can start creating our grid and creating our piece to look however we want it to and 
create these interaction spots for the walls. Cool. Okay, second thing I want to try is to do one more tile map in here and make it rectangular. And this one is going to be ice. And let's go ahead and set it to be say negative two. So in the ice layer, I want to draw a patch of ice. Now let's draw a big patch of ice out here. Let's do it down here in this corner. And then if I wanted to, I could come in with some other small pieces and make the ice have a little bit different look to it around the edges. And that's enough for now. Here's my little ice patch that I've made. I would like to make another collision spot on it. So if I go down here to tile map, tile map collider 2D, and I walk around my world, I should run into it. So I can't move through that ice that I just drew. Okay, well, what happens if I turn it into a trigger. So tile map collider 2D with a trigger on it lets it do something else. I can still collide with my walls up here, walk on top of my flavor, but I can walk on top of this. It still has a collider, but the collider is denoted as a trigger collider. Okay, so let's use that. Triggers are a way for you to have zones anywhere in your game that you can interact with. These are going to be able to react to some scripts. So let's write a script in here. We're going to make a new script called the ice script. And the ice script, don't forget, always forget this myself, got to pick it up and move it onto the ice object. So I'm going to put it on that layer. So now when I open it up, Let's see if I can get a debug message to show up. So void on trigger enter 2D debug log walking on ice. Let's see what happens. So open up the console. Let's look for those messages. When I get down to my ice, do I see a message? Yes, yes I do. Walking on ice. Good. This did not work before when I was doing it in class, but now it works. I'm doing the exact same thing, but hooray. Whenever I get there, it says walking on ice. Perfect. So I have an opportunity to do something. What I would like to do is to say if the player ever walks on the ice, that it just stops them from changing their direction. It stops them from halting in the middle. And so it's just gonna keep them sliding as we go through it. Okay, so let's go quickly do that. In our player, we're going to have a new Boolean. Sliding. And we're gonna start off that Boolean being false. Great, so we are going to be able to say, if you are not sliding, then you have an opportunity to change those values for horizontal and vertical. But if you are sliding, then your update does nothing. And you're gonna keep on making your velocity be whatever it's supposed to be based on horizontal and vertical, whatever those numbers are. Okay. Let's give ourselves a nice method here. Uh, slide boolean sliding. Whoa, that's the wrong. This dot sliding equals sliding. There we go. Okay, this is the, getting the player set up to slide, making those changes. And now in the ice, I need to say. Well, go figure out. Well, first, I really should know, did I collide with a player? And so if 
collision dot game object dot compare tag. We're going to have to tag it with a tag called player. Say so if a player just ran into me, then I can go talk to them and go find their script. Player move PM equals Collision, game object, get component, player move. Okay, that lets me talk to my other script that I just changed. And I can say, I want you to slide. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to work. Let's go make sure that we do the last step here. Our player is untagged. I am going to tag it with player and save it and see what happens. So I'm hoping when I hit the ice, I, st I am unable to stop moving. Yes. Okay, good. It worked. But there's also another method that is called when you leave a trigger. And right now you can see that the groundhog is sliding on the ice and it will keep on sliding. Well, it actually, I caught it really quickly, I guess, in between the frames. Let's try that one more time. That was odd. But here's what we can do. Why did you stop? One more time. Gotta get into it here. And then, yes, I can let my hands go and it keeps on going. Okay, so on trigger enter, we do the same thing and we're gonna change those words. Oh, we're gonna copy paste. Be careful when you copy paste. And I'm gonna say on trigger exit. And I'm gonna say leaving the ice and if it's a player go get it and make it stop sliding let's see what we get back here okay moving around we hit the ice and we got stuck we got really stuck that's unfortunate. That wasn't happening before. Let me see. I probably want to put the sliding somewhere else. There we go. We can go back and forth. It's the sideways. It's the sideways. And let's see. I think if we make one more change over here in the player move, instead of it being here, we're always going to go get horizontal and vertical. But notice what we were doing <clears throat> down here. Because we have this move limiter, we were constantly multiplying things times the move limiter, which exponentially decayed that value. So it's really this part <clears throat> that we need to be stopping. If sliding, or if you're not sliding, then you get to do this cool stuff. Okay, let's see if that fixes my diagonal error. I can still go sliding, yes. Back and forth, but what if I come diagonally? And I'm sliding up and down. I'm sliding diagonally. Good. Okay. So we are all taken care of with that small bug. Okay. So now I've got ice and I can introduce new triggers in my tile map. And the cool thing that I like about this, now that everything is set up, I can come back and drop ice like anywhere I want to in my world. And whenever I put in the ice, I will automatically slide on that ice. Wherever it is. I had to do nothing else but draw new things in that world. And 
I am sliding on ice. Okay, cool. That'll end this video. In our next one, we'll talk about making some dialogue.